Hey everybody, today's topic is why do we need basic research anyway? A lot of people I've talked to over the years have kind of, uh, you know, looked at me and said, hey, you know, oh, I, research isn't for me. I just, uh, I don't like research. And I think, how can you say that? And I'll tell you why. Research, scientific research, is the single best way we have of gaining new knowledge and accurate knowledge about the world that we live in. And especially in psychology, we have a lot of work to do. So I get really discouraged when I hear students come to me and say, oh, I don't like research. And I always wonder, do you really not like research or do you just, is it just intimidating to you? Because you don't know much about it, right? It seems big and complex, but it's not maybe as complicated as, as you might think. And um, it's really important that individuals who are gonna both uh, practice and participate in uh, the mental health field in any way, uh, aware of uh, how scientific research can guide what we're doing. So let me just hit you with some cold, hard reality here. Uh, have we got it figured out? I don't think we do. Look at the prevalence of mental disorders. In fact, let's just go to the uh, National Institute of Mental Health website. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna look at some of the statistics here. So let's look at uh, mental illness. Um, mental illness, let's see. We were looking for uh, prevalence of any mental illness. Um, in 2017, 18.9%, so almost uh, one in five of all adults in the U.S. had a, a mental health uh, illness in the last year. And I, I want to see uh, lifetime prevalence overall. Okay, 50%. 50%. Who is going to have a mental illness sometime in their lifetime? Uh, you or someone you care about, because half of us are dealing with mental disorders. Okay, so what happens if you have a mental disorder? Let me switch back here. First of all, how many of those people are actually going to go out and seek help? Uh, only a tiny fraction of them. Some chunk of those are going to actually go out. Most of them are going to go untreated. Uh, some of them are going to go to seek mental health treatment. Uh, but there are a lot of different places where you can seek mental health treatment. Some of those are going to be better or worse than others. Now, maybe you could argue that some treatment is better than others, but um, or some treatment is better than none. But the problem is there are a lot of individuals out there who are getting treatment that it has no evidence to suggest that it is helpful. And so... Um, they define, the government defines something called minimally adequate treatment. And that is any treatment that's been shown and this is minimally adequate, it has some basis to show that it's actually effective, some kind of scientific evidence. And so of that chunk that has a mental illness, and so that was the first chunk, <clears throat> a smaller chunk <coughs> sought treatment, an even smaller chunk is going to get minimally adequate treatment. And then for a bunch of those, it's not gonna work. Okay, as an example of what I'm talking about, uh, maybe we could consider major depression. Now, major depression is a debilitating and life-threatening mental illness, and it affects one in five people in the United States, uh, at least among adults. It affects one in 10 every year. So there's a lot of people who have recurrent episodes, and it turns out uh, this problem's only getting worse. This is one where uh, the younger you are, uh, younger adults tend to have more episodes of major depression than older adults. So uh, this is a big problem. 
Now, out of that uh, 20% of the population, only one out of every three cases is even going to bother seeking treatment. And out of that small fraction that seeks treatment, uh, about two out of five are going to get what we call minimally adequate treatment. So treatments that have been shown to be uh, effective. Two out of five is less than half. And then of those who get minimally adequate treatment, how many of them are going to respond to treatment? Less than half. So that works out to about, uh, if you look at the big, the overall picture, about 16, between 16 to 17% roughly of people with depression are actually successfully treated. Now, all of this is going on while uh, suicides outnumber homicides by three to two. You have all these people out there who have a life-threatening mental illness, uh, incredibly common in our population, uh, but we don't, if we can get them into treatment, right, which is a question on its own, how do we get people to, to go to treatment? How do we get them to stay in treatment? And then how do we find better treatments that are more effective for more people? Uh, suicide is one of the top 10 causes of death. And I think we can do better. And the way to do better is by having more people, people like you, uh, participating in research, uh, either as a practitioner or even as a, a participant, uh, to help promote uh, the treatment options that we have available. So we went from this huge group of individuals, <coughs> many of which didn't get treatment at all, only a few of them got minimally adequate treatment, and for half of them it didn't work. So you're only getting, out of this huge chunk, you're only getting a tiny fraction of the people who are actually getting better. We need to do better than that. We have such a problem in this country with mental illness. And in order to actually get better and improve these treatments and make sure that more people are getting minimally adequate treatment and making sure that minimally adequate bar keeps going up and up because these folks aren't getting better. How do we do that? Well, the only way to move forward on this is to improve both the kinds of research we're doing, the amount of research we're doing, and making sure that people who are practicing as clinicians in some form or fashion are using the best up-to-date uh, science that we have and contributing as part of their job duties to our scientific understanding of what's going on and how to best help individuals. Okay. Now, I'm talking about this from a clinical perspective because that's what typically people, uh, you know, gets ears perked. But there are a lot of things that we need to know about just normal everyday behavior because we can optimize our world. The better we understand human well-being uh, across many different contexts, uh, the better we understand behavior even in non-human animals, the better we are going to be at uh, helping understand behavior in general and applying it to all kinds of different problems that we face in the world. So this is my call to you as someone who may be working in the mental health field, or may be uh, encouraging others to do so, or may be a consumer of um, mental health services. We need you. We need you to uh, participate in research, to uh, learn how to conduct very basic research. Because when I look at the world, I see a really tragic state of affairs in which we have lots of people suffering very few people getting help. And in many ways, psychology is still really in the dark ages. We haven't found anything that resembles a um, cure. <laughs> so next time you're thinking about why is this important, I hope you'll think about all the different ways that research has the potential to benefit um, whatever problem it is you're trying to solve in your life. Uh, whether it be how to sell more... Um, boxes of crackers, uh, or uh, how to cure people of their depression, or maybe it's um, how to help kids stay in school. Uh, whatever the problem is that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Maybe it's just how to get your toddler to use, uh, to, to use the potty instead of diapers. Right? 
whatever it is, research is the best tool we have for helping improve your life and the lives of those you care about. Okay, I guess I can get down off my soapbox and uh, I hope that this has convinced you to, um, to really value basic research and encourage you to take it seriously when you're learning about research as a tool for uh, solving some of these important problems that we face. All right, I will see you next time. I think I got a little too preachy on that one. <laughs>